The scripture reading from this morning is from Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. The word of God for the people of God. I know what you're thinking. Yes, that was a different scripture reading than Luke chapter 4. <laughs> we can do that still, don't worry. But today we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6 because we know that Jesus went into the wilderness, right? And he entered himself out, but he was prepared. Jesus was prepared for the wilderness. And we see here in Ephesians chapter 6 this unseen armor of God that comes from the Spirit. Now, Pastor Brian's going to talk about the armor later. Before we get there, we have to look at some other things. First, Ephesians 6 is written years after Jesus has already ascended into heaven. So we know that the armor of God is not just for Jesus. It's for us. It's something that we're supposed to have for our lives. And why do we need that armor? Oh, that sounds good. Great job. I appreciate that. Why do we need that armor? Are we supposed to take this 40-day pilgrimage as well? Where we go out into the wilderness and spend time being tempted by the enemy? Well, probably not. But there is a reality that we all face the same enemy. Let me read this to you. It says in Ephesians, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. We can add in the parentheses or political parties or people who disagree with you. We'll get there later. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Friends, we have an enemy. One that we will struggle with. Not may struggle with. Will struggle with. You cannot be good enough that you will not struggle against the enemy. If that was true, then Jesus would have not had to go into the wilderness to be tempted. We have an enemy. The devil. The Satan. The accuser. The tempter. The one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. My literal, before even John 3.16, the, the, the verse that I first memorized was 1 Peter 5.8. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. KJV, because that's how I learned it. That was so ingrained in me at the church that I cut my teeth on faith in that we had this enemy. We had this enemy that's out to get us. But if we're honest, we don't like that. We're not a big fan of this conversation because with all of our advancements in science and technology, we somehow think we're smarter than the apostles, than the disciples. We think that, well, they just didn't understand things like we understand things. 
They just don't get it like we get it now. And with all of our understanding and advancements, and now we understand the physical nature of our world, we have completely lost the spiritual nature of who we are as people. For instance, we take spirituality to mean emotion. When we want something to be more spiritual, we want it to cause an emotional response within us. We want it to make us well up with tears. And that's a really spiritual moment. And because of our atrophy, our spiritual muscles have weakened so much that even the acknowledgement that there could be an enemy pushes us beyond our limits. There's no personification of evil. People do bad things and the rest is just coincidence. That's how we view the world. And the separation of the enemy from our thoughts and theology has created a frustrating paradox for Christians and non-Christians. You see, if you consider yourself a Christian, you believe that God became man, was fully God and fully man, died on the cross, was resurrected, then ascended into heaven. That's a core fundamental, you have to get this. But yet you can't be pushed enough to think that there might be an evil force that opposes God. So you see how hard that can be for somebody to swallow, right? We believe that we can pray to a God who hears us and does things on our behalf, but we don't believe in an enemy that's opposing that same God. We've lost our spiritual muscles. And because of that, we fall prey to our enemy. And we've also lost the spiritual aspect of our lives. The eyes to see what's happening. Would you consider yourself a spiritual person? And not in some new age type of way. Where you have a, a bowl and a rock and a pomegranate that you sit there with and meditate, whatever that looks like. But a spiritual person through the lens of the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me help you out there. What if we made such a course correction, such a change, that goes directly in defiance to our hubris, and decided to see the entirety of the world through spiritual and not physical eyes? What if we believe that Paul knew what he was talking about? What if we believe that Paul Newton is talking about not just for church management, but also for Christian living? What if we took, you know, the fact that Jesus casted out demons real and allowed that to inform our decisions? What if Jesus was actually tempted by Satan? What if you actually would be tempted too? So what if we went to the full spiritual side instead of the f full physical side, just for a moment, and saw everything as spiritual. I, I play a uh, sport, use that air quote, sport called disc golf. <laughs> and in disc golf, they tell you that you have to watch your form, right? So if you're doing a, a right-handed backhand, you have to do an X step, cross and throw. That was beautiful, wasn't it? You like that, Joe? <laughs> But they tell you if you have to make an adjustment to your form, that you have to over-exaggerate it first. So if you're supposed to bend over more, you can't just do this. You have to, to get your body to understand there's a change. Once your body understands there's a change, then it begins to modify that change to where it needs to be. What if we did the same thing with our eyes? Think, of this right, think about this right now. What are the things that are currently happening in your life personally? The troubles and the trials, the things that you're going through right now, personally. Think about those for a second. What if they were all purely spiritual battles? Have you responded correctly? If every battle you're facing right now is a spiritual battle, are you responding properly? What about your loved ones, your family, your friends, the people who are around you in your life? And you see what's causing them pain and suffering. 
Have you viewed that as spiritual at all? Have you prayed for them? You see, so often we uh, come to church and we want our, uh, our hit of Jesus so we can go and last the next seven days and try to come back. I think one of the reasons why people find it so hard to be the same people they are in here and out there is because we're not spiritual. We don't live it. We want emotion. We want things to make us feel a certain way. But we're not actively seeking God in a spiritual realm. And that makes us not be able to see our enemy who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So maybe if you have an enemy, do you feel like you could properly identify and fight against that enemy in spiritual battles? Do you think you could? You know, one of the most famous generals of our time said this, knowing is half the battle. It's G.I. Joe. <laughs> knowing is half the battle. Here's the part, though, that you have to understand. If you know it and don't prepare for it, you still lose the battle. If you know that you have an enemy, but you don't prepare for it, you still lose. So how are you preparing for the battle? 